Hi everyone, it's Linda from Linda Z's in Arlington Heights. Ready for your coffee or your water or whatever you need right now. I am going to show you a quick little tip about basting today. I think that many of you have obviously tried some of our quilting techniques and that's what I want you to do is kind of expand your horizon a little bit and I'm going to show you a way to do that. If you have been watching, we're in the studio. I've been filming a couple of episodes today which are really fun. I also did a warehouse um, for Black Friday that was really fun. I hope you watched it. If not, look on Facebook Live. You'll see our um, posting and uh, lots of bargains, <laughs> okay? Well, let's get started. I think that um, I'm going to talk about not only just the basing, but what kind of thread. I happen to have the M17 uh, Janome here. We've had it in the studio and it's fairly big to lift and carry back. So I thought, as long as we have it here, I'll do it on here. I, I love what they've done. It's really pretty cool. I'm gonna do another video too on actually uh, doing free motion quilting with their accurate stitch regulator, but that'll be a different video. Today, I just wanna show you a real quick and easy way to do manual basting. Most of you can do this on any of your sewing machines. Uh, I think you'll be able to pick up what I'm doing, but I want to start by showing you the foot. This is called a PD-H. Now, it's a darning foot. You can see there's two little um, red lines here. It's clear, so it's very easy to see. And then see this little hook over here? That's what's going to attach to the needle bar. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, attach it while you're here. When you're putting a new foot on your machine, on this particular machine, they have a wonderful thing and it's called the lockout key. And you see it down here on the screen or up here on the screen, they have two screens. This is your big one, this is your smaller one. And if you touch that lockout key, everything will um, lock up. <laughs> so easy to do. And you saw that the, um, the foot control, uh, the foot control went down, or maybe you didn't see that. See this little, le this little screw here? That's going to go around here. So I'm going to just raise this manually with my hand in the back. And then I'm going to put this little foot around the corner. You can see it. I loosened the screw so it can get on there a little bit easier. And then just hold it on nice and tight as you are tightening the screw. And when I do that, once I got it where I think it's nice and tight, you wanna take your screwdriver and tighten it up. Now I can go ahead and do the automatic needle threader. See how I threaded it automatically? I'm using the red tip, which is what from Oregon that they um, suggest. And I also am, um, it's a 90 um, needle. And again, it's just, um, I'm using uh, Batik here to show you. I've already got this one basted, but I'm gonna show you on an easy, simple thing to do. Um, I have a big piece behind me, but before I get that big piece, I'm gonna show you on this little one what I've done. The needle is threaded. It's on the outside of the um, foot. I wanna bring it on the inside, so I'm gonna take the lockout off. I'm gonna bring my foot underneath. Now, it's gonna be hard for you to see this because what I've done is I started in the center and I basted this way and this way, and this way, and this way. So it was very simple to do. I literally pulled the fabric. And you're gonna see that as I'm going on, but I want, I'm gonna start in the center and go out to the corner so you can see what I'm doing again. This time I have a much darker thread so it might be easier to see. But before I do this, I have to set up my machine. So let's go to the screen itself and you can see I'm, if you go to your home screen, you've got three different uh, areas for application, ordinary sewing, sewing application, and embroidery. I'm gonna touch the sewing application mode. And then you've got all this information here with these arrows, and I'm gonna go over until I find basting. And I'm gonna go one more time, and there it is. I just touched the basting, and it automatically brought it up to auto. I don't want to do automatic basting. That's fine if I'm doing maybe a zipper, you know, I want to baste in a zipper, I want to baste a garment or whatever, but that's not what I want to do. I want to do manual basting because I'm going to do a big quilt and or a small quilt sandwich. 
And you can see on the bottom of the screen, it's showing a PDH, which means that's the foot that I was just showing you. And then I touch the manual and I'm all ready to go. I'm all set up and, and ready. So before I start this, I wanna make sure my foot is down. And I also want to make sure that my needle, I'm gonna bring it down and then I'm gonna bring it up again. Now, this is where, let's bring my foot up. This is where I can pull my threads to the top. And I've got that little one underneath and the one up here. So I, I now do you see how it's underneath the foot? So it's much easier to start. Let's get started. All I have to do is make a little motion. Now I'm not using gloves. I'm just pushing my fabric with my hands. But you see, as I'm, I do that stitch, I'm gonna take another stitch and I'm gonna move the fabric. I'm gonna take another stitch and I'm gonna move the fabric. I have my foot pedal plugged in. You could be doing this with your start stop button too. I just prefer the foot pedal when I'm doing this. It's just easy to do. And again, this is a small piece of um, fabric. It's not real big, so it's easy to push it back. All I'm doing, I took a stitch, watch again, and I push it back. I'm gonna take another stitch and then I'm gonna push it back. I'm gonna take another stitch and push it back. This way I can adjust the type of basting that I want it to do. Another stitch and push it back. See how easy that is? I've got a real big piece that I'm gonna try in a minute and show you. Just take a stitch, push it back. Take a stitch and push it back. Now, this is a practice piece and I'll, um, you know, I could go ahead and just um, cut this thread. I, If I were a quilt, I would pull those threads up with my needle up, needle down, and bring them to the top and tie it. But now I think you can see this darker color thread here. You see how it's basted? I did not take my other basting out. If this were a quilt that I was using, I would absolutely take that out as I'm using. I would do this, say for instance, this heart, but before I do it, I would take that basting out because it's already basted around here. Then the next one, I would do this heart and I would definitely take these out. This is just strictly practice. So that's why I just leave the basting in. On the back, you can see the basting sits. You see where it went? You can see the light one. Can they get that up close, Nick? Are they seeing that? Yeah. See that real light? See this real light? It went this way and that way. That's all I really would have needed for this small piece. Because you can see I did the basing and then I started to do the free motion with my accurate uh, stitch control. But all I wanted to show you is basing. Basing is such an important thing. When you're doing these very small pieces like this, the basing, you know, you could just go in those directions. You could do another one this way and another two this way. This is a bigger piece that, this is actually an Amanda Murphy piece that many of you know, we just finished our quilt week and it was, well, it's not quite finished yet. We do have Nina McVeigh coming in um, this next weekend, but we had some really, really good, uh, we had Robin Pippins who was just fabulous on free motion quilting. And she, we put these sandwiches together and it's a very, you know, it's a pretty large one. And when I'm doing quilting like this, because it is so big and it's kind of cumbersome, I lay it all out on my table and then I put these little pins in here and you can see, I'll take one out for you to see how easy it is to put in. Just go down, up, and then just click it. See this little, you can see how it goes in there because it's bent. And these bent pins are the best thing I can't imagine I'm doing quilting without. You see how it just clicks in there on the uh, on the actual one. I don't know why this one, do as I say, not as I do, right? <laughs> I don't know why this one's having trouble because every single other one, well, that means there's something wrong with this one. And of all the pinning I've done, I don't think I've ever had one that didn't easily go in there. So I want to find approximately the center. I have Kona fabric on the back. This again is a practice piece too but I will use it for maybe a wall hanging or a, you know, just some kind of a decorative um, piece that's really kind of fun. So I can fold it in force. And let's see, we'll go to about here. Should have done that on the right side. But this is approximately my center. 
right here where this black line is. So let me take this one out and I'm going to put this under the foot. Now I am definitely not going to sew over these pins. So if you're shuddering when you see this, you'll go, oh my gosh, what is she doing? So I'm going to go right to the center of this. Let's see, it's about right here. It doesn't have to be exact, but it's just kind of a nice thing to know. Now, you can see that what happened here is somehow I pulled my thread out. I pull my thread all the way over in here. I cut it. The great thing about this machine, I wish all machines did this, they have this lockout key, as you know. It's the, the um, needle threader is now highlighted, so I can go ahead and voila, it is completely threaded. So it's really a nice, nice feature. And again, I want to now pull my both of my threads up so I can go ahead and uh, take my lock off key off and take my needle down and bring it back up again and pull my little trusty scissor here through. And there we go. We've got the bottom and the top up. It wouldn't really matter because again, this is a practice piece, but you want to practice it like you're going to actually be doing this as a quilt. So again, what do we what do we do when we want to start? We want to make sure our foot is down. This needle bar is all on. The, the foot is, it's a darning foot. It's in the right um, position. I want to go ahead and touch my manual quilting, which it's all set up for that, the basting and the manual quilting. And now I'll just go ahead and start bringing it forward. And again, this I might want to bring a little bit longer stitch. You see how I made that a little longer? See how I'm going to bring it a little longer? And I'm kind of holding my finger behind because again, I don't want it to um, pucker on me. It could pull a little bit. If that happens to you, I have a suggestion. And those of you that do like to wear gloves, I do occasionally. When I start to do my uh, free motion, I will put these gloves on. <clears throat> I do like this because it's very rough. The nice thing about these, I'll take it out of the package so you can see it. And again, there's no right or wrong. This is up to you, the way you like to quilt. It's got this little um, holder in the middle here. Let me take it out. You can see it. It's kind of a cool thing, actually. And you put your middle finger in and go ahead and attach it here. And now you have some um, substance holding it. And then you still have your fingers free. So I'll use these and show you what I'm talking about, even when I'm doing the basting. I usually don't when I'm doing basting, but see how it's got a little bit of a rough surface here? And that's what's going to go down on your fabric. So let's go ahead and stitch it again and pull it again. Stitch down. I'm doing this with my foot pedal. You could do the start stop button, but it's so much easier to, I think, with your foot control. I'll keep doing it. One. I'm going fairly slowly so you can see the stitching as I'm doing this. And then as soon as I get all this stitching done, all this spacing done, and again, I go much faster than this. I'm talking as I'm doing this, so I just want you to see the, the method that the um, quilt basting is when you're doing it. It's actually almost like a, a band. You can hear the click of the foot, click, boom, click, boom, click, boom. <laughs> and you start, uh, you know, really going to town when you start with a big quilt because the basting is really important. You don't want that shifting on you from the back fabric or from your um, batting fabric either. This is such a big piece that I'm now going to go this way, this way, then I'm going to go corner to that corner to this corner and this corner to that corner and you will be done. You will be ready to start with us. So if you want to actually get this going, I would go ahead and get yourself what we call a quilt sandwich like this. Find some fabric. This is a great fabric from Amanda Murphy and we do have it in the store because it's got big areas here that you can do your leaves or your uh, feathers in. You can do circles, you can do ruler work if you wanted to. I'm going to do all free motion, but you could practice on any type of quilting that you would want to do as long as you do have it basted. Okay, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us this week and I hope to see you next week. You know, Thanksgiving is coming, so you know what that means, Black Friday. <laughs> all right, see you guys soon. Thanks so much.